Hello students of class 9. Uh, we had already started the chapter the tiger's claw and we have uh, first seen that how uh, people, village people were rejoicing uh, the death of the tiger which had been creating a reign of terror for almost five years and then we saw that uh, the narrator um, being called by the um, talkative man and then he begins a story that uh, when he went to Kopal um, uh, in a month of November then um, you know the station master means he was received by a station master he went to the station master's house and uh, and then he went to the village headman's house and then he lectured about his product came back um, had dinner and then he didn't want to stay in the house any longer because it was a very small house um, with many members um, and um, um, then he thought of sleeping in the platform but then um, the station master warned him that it was full of tigers so the station room was open for him uh, at first he had locked the room but then um, he uh, opened the uh, door a little so that some fresh air could come in with a chair barricading the door and then he fell asleep and he had a dream of you know seeing uh, a cat like creatures uh, walking up the slope uh, in a very elegant manner but all of a sudden he saw that they were not cat like means they had climbed um, down the slope and up the hill and they were just right behind him and then he dashed for the nearest shelter that was the station so therein we stopped the other day um, at this point the dream ended as the chair barricading the door came hurtling through and fell on me Suppose this is, uh, you know, the, this would be the open, uh, the door is open. So he kept it half open and kept the chair, okay, barricading the door. So all of a sudden, you know, his dream broke because the chair came hurtling means flying, okay, mm, and fell on him. I opened my eyes and saw the door mm, I saw at the door a tiger pushing himself in. It was a muddled moment for me, not being sure whether the dream was continuing <clears throat> or whether I was awake. I at first thought that it was my friend, the station master, who was coming in, but my dream had fully prepared my mind. I saw the thing clearly against the starlit sky tail wagging, growling, and above all, his terrible eyes gleaming through the dark. So, all of a sudden, the chair which was barricading the door, it came flying, you know, um, 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 it went flying, uh, and it fell on the, um, the talkative man, and the talkative man, you know, he was just woken up and he thought that uh, maybe, you know, he was still sleeping. Um, and, you know, it was part of his dream. But, um, and then he thought that maybe, uh, but then he felt that a tiger was trying to come in. But he wasn't so sure that whether he was still dreaming or whether it was reality. Then he thought that maybe the station master had come. But then, you know, Mm, he had no doubts because um, the light of the stars had fallen on the tiger and he could um, see you know, the tail wagging, um, you know, the tiger was uh, growling and above all the bright eyes, gleaming eyes of the tiger. I understood that the fertilizer company would have to manage without my lectures from the following day. Uh, have to manage without the uh, lectures following day means uh, he knew that his end was near because now the tiger would kill him. The tiger himself was rather startled by the noise of the chair and stood hesitating. 
so the tiger should have you know just pounced on him but the tiger was also a bit you know uh, scared uh, because of the noise of the chair and he couldn't understand means it couldn't understand where it was coming from he saw me quite clearly in my corner and he seemed to be telling himself my dinner is there ready but let me first know what is um, this clattering noise uh, what this clattering noise is about so uh, it seemed to the talkative man as though the tiger is saying oh my dinner is ready okay i can see uh, my dinner that is the talkative man in front of him and uh, then he said that uh, but you know he first wanted to make sure that where this noise was coming from this uh, somehow um, wild animals are less afraid of human beings um, than they are of pieces of furniture like chair and tables i have seen in circus men managing a whole managery with nothing more than a chair God gives us such recollections in order to save us at critical moments and as the tiger stood observing me and watching the chair I put out my hands and with desperate strength drew the table towards me and also the stool I sat with my back to the corner the table wedged in nicely with the corner so what happened was um the Uh, talkative man um, suddenly remembered um, you know a fact that wild animals are not so afraid of human beings as they are of furniture okay and then he remembered seeing in circus that um, you know a person is managing the you know a whole set of animals with one single chair so um, when he remembered that he said that you know oh, god has given me this re- uh, recollection you know made me remember this and it will help me. so what he did was remember there was a chair the um, and a heavy table and a stool which he had pushed aside to um, you know make space for him to sleep but now what he did was when he saw the tiger and um, the tiger was a bit scared about the uh, chair or we can say that the tiger was not very sure that where the noise was coming from so he was a bit hesitant of pouncing on the uh, talkative man the talkative man immediately re- remembered about the fact that um, tigers um, or rather wild animals are afraid of um pieces of furniture so what he did was he now you know he drew the table that it was a heavy table but he drew the table with all his length and wedged it to the corner suppose uh, you know um any corner suppose and um, this is the corner so he uh, put you know brought it and just pushed it along with the corner so what would happen is uh, you know one side it would be uh, on um, uh, two sides it would be the wall okay wedged it means fixed it with the uh, corn and on the other side he took the stool and kept it there and in front of him was the chair so he used it like a shield because he remembered that fact that they are afraid of uh, pieces of furniture I sat with my back to the corner and the table wedged in nice um, and the table wedged in nicely with the corner okay back to the corner <clears throat> I sat under it and the stool walled up uh, another side so corner means you know he will get two sides blocked with the wall while I dragged the table a lot of things fell off it a table lamp a long knife and pins so these were the things which fell off from my shelter i peeped at the tiger so he was sort of you know if uh, this is the corner he brought the table and fixed it here so you have the wall on both the sides and he sat right uh, you know under the table this is the table and he sat right at 
and he put <clears throat> uh, the stool on the other side. So three sides he is protected and one side is open with which he, uh, you know, he kept the chair in front of him and he used it as a shield. And when he was pulling all these things, many things fell off the table. What were they? Uh, it was a, um, a table lamp, a long knife and some pits. Uh, from my shelter, I peeped at the tiger who was also watching me with interest. Evidently, he didn't like his meal to be completely shut out, uh, shut out of sight. So he cautiously advanced a step or two, making a sort of rumbling noise in his throat which seemed to shake up the little station house. My end was nearing. I really pitied the woman whose lot it was to have become my wife. So... Mm, the talkative man was um, sitting underneath and he was kind of protected and the tiger did not like it. So it was, you know, growling and making a, you know, loud noise and the, the whole, um, in, and with that noise, it seemed to the talkative man that the uh, a whole, uh, you know, station house was shaking. And the talkative man said that, you know, he knew that he won't be, he would die very soon. And uh, in a very humorous manner, he said that I pitied the, you know, um, I pitied the woman whose lot, whose lot means who was supposed to be. That is, he was not, uh, not married still, but whoever was supposed to become his wife, um, um, you know, would uh, would not be able to you know uh, become one because he's uh, he would be already dead. I held up the chair like a shield. I held up the chair. So remember, he was sitting underneath, and then he held up the chair in this way. So he's using using it as a shield. Um, I held up the chair like a shield and flourished it, and the tiger hesitated and fell back a step of two. Now, once again, we went some time watching each other's movements. I held my breath and waited. The tiger stood there fiercely waving its tail, which sometimes struck the side walls and sent forth a thud. Thud means a loud sound. He suddenly crouched down without taking his eyes off me and scratched the floor with, the, with his claws. He's sharpening them for me, I told myself. The little shack had already acquired the smell of a zoo. It made me sick. The tiger kept scratching the floor with his forepaws. It was the most hideous, the just horrible, terrible sound you could think of. So, um, what he did was he was using the chair like a shield. Okay, shield is, you uh, have seen, you know, soldiers use shield. Uh, in a battlefield in older days now this shield when he was using this chair as a shield all of a sudden uh, you know he flourished it that is he um, just uh, threw it at the tiger and the tiger you know uh, it also was you know all of a sudden it happened so it did not know what to do so it just stepped back you know it, it also became a bit scared and um, both of them were looking at each other for some time. And, um, um, you know, the talkative man just held his breath and the tiger was very angry. So, you know, he kept, it kept on, you know, swinging its tail uh, from one side to the other. So it hit the walls and sent forth the thud. That is, a, it created a loud noise. And the tiger kept, scratching the floor with its paws so it was a very hideous sound that the um you know the talkative man had ever heard okay <clears throat> so we stop here today we'll do the rest of um, means the last portion of the chapter the next day thank you students